Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. So today I wanted to celebrate a little bit of uh, Java 17 release because uh, I'm curiously recording this just a few days uh, before the release because I want to get this out immediately when it's being released and we are so close already. Uh, why I am being a fanboy about Java 17? Well, the modern Java just went to this uh, kind of release train system where we are getting new major releases all the time. Uh, technically, they will be coming like half, half a year, six months, and then you get the new release. So it means that there's a little bit of inflation for the releases. So it's not like earlier when you have Java 1.2 and 1.3, there might be several years between them and they were huge releases. But then the problem was that a lot of things changed immediately. And with the new modern Java, uh, what is happening is that we get these kind of major releases, but we get them in a steady release train, meaning that we are able to play earlier with some features that, are, that might not even yet be done. And I think that's very, very cool thing. But it also means that not all Java versions are equal. So unless you are really crazy, you probably cannot update your entire Java setup every half a year. I, I have actually done that, so I suppose I'm crazy. But I like to keep a bit uh, leaning for the future, so I like to see the new things as they appear and, and play with them when I can. But I think uh, many of you are probably on Java 11, which is long-term support base, and uh, therefore you can say better supported in many, many tools. It's a good platform. Uh, a lot of you are still on Java 8, and while it's also a good platform, it's like years back, it's your grandfather's Java, really. So the new Javas are much more fun. They are leaner, meaner, faster, and uh, very exciting new updates coming up. So uh, let's actually dive into the matter. I wanted to show you something. So here is the JDK release uh, page. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm still seeing release candidate phase, but when you are able to see this video, it's, uh, it's gone to general availability, which means that you can immediately get it for several platforms. And we have this nice feature set because we are getting new releases uh, that are a bit smaller, perhaps uh, the feature set is manageable. So it's possible to go through this and get some insight and understanding what's happening here. And uh, Java 17 is the next long term support platform. That's why it's so important. So we would expect to stay on this level for quite some time once people up update themselves here. But I wanted to first uh, point out that it's not just this feature set. This is quite fun stuff already. But we also have Java 12. So anything that happened after Java 11 pretty much is included here as well. And because many people don't update to these intermediate uh, versions at all, pretty much everything in Java 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 is included. I'm going to mention some of my favorites here just randomly uh, that are included in Java 17 now and are not in Java 11 yet. But I'm not really going to do a lengthy deep dive in, in this. If you would like to see me go uh, with more time, some of my favorite features, do leave some feedback in the comment section because I, I listen to it and if, if there is demand, I will definitely do a better video. But right now I just wanted to shortly just mention some of the cool stuff. So we've got a lot of uh, garbage collection goodness, new algorithms, new tunings, new capabilities to make them better, typically handling bigger amounts of memory better and having better predictability so they don't do those lengthy pauses anymore. Switch expressions are awesome, so they, they've, they've got so much goodness across these releases. I've uh, talked about this in my some, some, some of my previous videos and shown some tricks you can do. Um, I will probably show one today because I cannot <laughs> resist the temptation. And uh, if we go onwards, we have uh, things like uh, text blocks. Things always appear first in preview and then at some point they are not preview anymore. So people play around with them, they might still change and then they become good enough to be kind of version one at least. And uh, as you can see in Java 14, we got a lot of goodness here. So pattern matching, 
it's been done so awesomely in some other languages. In Java it started very small, but note how it's expanding all the time. I've shown some tricks with pattern matching, but it's not done yet. So expect it to keep on expanding and becoming better and better. Um, helpful null pointer exceptions. I really love these because it's just that your <clears throat> system out print line or your, your stack traces just became more friendly. And uh, you have seen, probably if you have seen my videos, you've seen me ranting about records. Such awesome goodness happening there. Uh, so, so much stuff you can do without generating code or, or writing code. And I always love that quite a lot. And as I said, not going to go through all these, but just mentioning a few interesting things that you will have in your Java 17. Uh, text blocks have got out of uh, preview. Uh, we got sealed classes preview. Again, I've shown this in some past videos. I'll try to drop some links in this video. So if you're interested, you can find me rant about these favorite features. But these are for me, these are quite old already. Java 16 records came out of preview. So they are now kind of official. They will get more goodness in the future but it's like version one already. So it's better supported in, in all uh, frameworks. And now that we got Java 17 long-term support platform, expect also the tools to start uh, supporting them in a nice way. So uh, that was kind of my point number one. I have like three parts to this video. Point number one, even though Java 17 feature list is not that long, if you consider anything after Java 11, which is probably very well used platform right now, there is a lot to go through. So part number two, just wanted to point out that how do you get to play with these? Well, watch my videos. Um, you will see some fun stuff that can be done with these. Obviously, the JDK API documentation is already out, so you can just use that as a reference, including a lot of tutorials. But I'll also drop uh, a link to awesome Oracle article about the hidden gems in Java 16 and 17. So if I were to do a video on the uh, fun stuff, I would probably do something quite similar to what they have here. But if you are impatient, you can go here and just uh, spend 15 minutes and read and play a little bit yourself and you will be all, all the way up to speed. So if you prefer to listen to my voice and see some kind of crazier examples, then as I said, let me know and I might make that video as well. But there's good, good stuff coming uh, on micro and macro level on, on what's happened here. And a lot of these things are just crazy. You, you wouldn't be able to do them on Java 11, for example, or even 15 as it, as it goes. It's good to stay up to date with Java. So you are using the latest tool tools now. This is the point where we go to third part of the video because I wanted to focus on one thing that's rather new and that's Vector API. So Vector API is listed in second incubator in, in Java 14. Um, it's still not like version 1.0, but you can already play with it quite well and it's going to get better. Why is Vector API interested? Uh, well, I'm obsessed with uh, parallel execution, because anytime you are able to take a task and you are able to run it at the same time, um, you will obviously save a lot of time. So I've been playing with all Java parallelism in, in, in time. So there was the fork and join API and even threads uh, and synchronization originally. And uh, then we got the updates to those thread pooling and, and uh, executors and all that goodness. Um, and now we have Vector API. Vector is a little bit different, so we are not dealing with threads anymore, but we are dealing with something called seamed. Uh, and well, I will drop the Wikipedia link here as well, because the idea is to do single instruction, multiple data. So you define the algorithm and then you feed it data. And the cool stuff is here that this is not like running threads. So this can be, if the environment supports it, it can be truly uh, simultaneous uh, parallel hardware level execution. Um, the cool thing is that obviously you, you have been able to do this earlier, but like with Java, the idea is that we would have a common approach that you can always use and uh, then it's portable seamed code. 
So sometimes you don't get the benefit of speed and sometimes you do, but you always have the same code that would always function. It would be slower or faster depending on how good the environment is. So I think this is pretty cool stuff and uh, obviously this applies best when you have a problem that is suitable. So we are looking for a problem where you have a one algorithm and then you can feed it some simple data like uh, you want to multiply some numbers or divide some numbers, uh, stuff like that. Um, this is very good uh, for game programming, graphics programming, and uh, probably good for data science work as well. You might find some, some places where you can accelerate your execution quite a lot. Um, my problem is that when I want to learn something new, theory is not enough for me. I always want to play with it. So I want to apply some, some existing problem and try to solve it. I was uh, planning to do a FizzBuzz uh, episode where I would solve the ever cool FizzBuzz simple uh, mathematical kind of problem and solve it with the simd style. But I always do a little bit of research. So it happened that I found an awesome uh, solution for this already by awesome Gunnar Morling. Uh, again, I'm linking this article in the in the description field of the video. Uh, there's a lot more explanation and uh, the good stuff, there is a lot more code. So I was playing with this as well. There's a GitHub repository that you can pull and uh, start playing with it. It's good stuff. I ran this on my machine and I got a lot of acceleration for the Windows. Uh, it was a bit surprising, but I, I was running Windows with Windows subsystem for Linux and I got a lot of acceleration based uh, c compared to the naive approach that could be done. So very good stuff. I'm just dropping the link here. I'm not even going to do a commentary. It's worth reading if you got interested by what I just mentioned. So worth reading this and worth uh, pulling the Git repo and, and starting to play with it a little bit. I did want to point out one more thing before I wrap this up. Let's go to my demo <laughs> playground. So here I have a window and I just wanted to show you qu some quick things how you can play with this, even if you are not willing to immediately commit to Java 70. So I have a folder, I have some uh, code here. Good, good thing. Uh, my normal environment is now running uh, Java version uh, 16. I've been doing it for quite some time. It's been out for quite some time and 16 is good. But I do want to play with 17 and right now uh, I don't have the general availability even yet available for me. So what can I do? Well, uh, one thing I can do, I could install early access here, but I don't like to pollute my, my environment in such way. So I like to, to use Docker. And uh, therefore I have this little nice command that works awesomely. Docker run and uh, remove the image once done. I'm mapping my current folder uh, to a folder in the, in the kind of Docker machine. And then I'm uh, saying that this is my home directory as well. And the image I'm using is OpenJDK 17, which takes the latest version available, which right now for me is it's a pre-release. And I'm instead of running JShell, which, which is also cool, I'm running Bash. So what I can do here is Without polluting my machine, I'm able, able to take a look at my code and I'm able to run it. So let's run this one. I have this test uh, Java file here. And uh, remember, one of the new Java features is that you don't really need to compile it anymore. You can treat it as a script. So I can say Java, like and sus subscribe Java and run it. And you all got a nice greeting there. And remember to like and subscribe, of course. But I also have some uh, Java 17 stuff here. Just something I grabbed very rapidly. And uh, I could edit it here. And then I can run it with Docker. The fun stuff is that, yeah, the ID is not up to speed yet. So as I said, uh, ID is typically uh, take a little bit of time to accommodate latest versions unless they are really clever and doing stuff uh, a little bit ahead but they typically don't support the new syntax so easily. And uh, then um, 
it might be that they will only handle the long-term support platform. So I'm suspecting that, that some of the IDs have good support for Java 11 and will have good support for Java 17. But just pointing out that IDs might take some time to kind of catch up with this, depending on uh, how kind of well-cared ID it is. So typically when you pay money, like ID, IntelliJ IDE um, is, is typically catching up faster. With the VS Code, I would expect it to be there quite fast as well. But anyway, even though I have read it's not broken, it's just kind of IDE is broken right now. What I can do is run this, but uh, I do have to enable preview right now for the some of the stuff here. So I'm just saying Java enable preview source 17 Java 17 stuff. And what is happening here? Well, I'm combining, uh, I have a static function and combining the new switch case syntax, the new syntax, there's some variations and some, some doohickery going on, but here is kind of short term of the new syntax. And we have pattern matching combined with it. So this is starting to remind me of some of the languages that I have used in the past, some other JVM languages. So I think fun stuff and you can play it with it immediately and you don't need to pollute your work or fun machine and you can just get docker like I did. So I just wanted to share this little trick here for you. I'm not going to drop these codes uh, since these are so simple. So I'm not going to put them into any git or anything like that. If you want to grab them, pause now. It's a big font so you are probably able to copy the important parts and uh, do it after me as well. And also grab that hidden gems article and try to run the codes there and run that seamed fizzbuzz variant and uh, it will be fun for you. So um, as I said, I wanted to keep this rather, rather short. I never succeed to do it, it seems already quite long. But I wanted to just ring the bell and say that JDK and Java 17 is out now. Uh, go out and play. And there's a lot of good stuff. I'm betting that many of you haven't updated your knowledge to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, I'm uh, interviewing people all the time for work and uh, I'm always highly impressed when I see somebody up to date with uh, what's happening in Java. I'm not saying that it's bad if your level is on Java 8. It's perfectly okay. Perhaps you are putting your emphasis on other areas. But as I said, if somebody is able to have a discussion on what's going on in Java 17, then they are either uh, quite up to date with Java uh, and interested in things showing some passion that I, I think is a good signal, or they have been watching my videos, which is awesome signal. So that's an easy way to win some brownie points and also be knowledgeable. And perhaps you can enlighten some of your colleagues that uh, something is happening with Java all the time, some good stuff. So I'm afraid I will have to now cut this off and go and play with Java a bit more. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you want to see some in-depth dives in some of the features in the future. I will happily do that. I will do some more technical content for you. But today I just wanted to kind of tell that go and play. Thanks for watching. See you in the future. Bye bye.